All right, great. I, I will see. Um, hopefully we will reach, although I truly doubt it, hopefully we will reach at that point where the reason I sent you the video about the roles uh, will become clear. My main uh, thing that I would like to tell you is one reason why it might be boring to you this material and it hasn't been boring to me is because I see in it far more than uh, other people. It's the same as when you are, no, I mean, I'm assuming you're young and apparently many people play video games today, maybe more so than before, right? And uh, the reason you play those video games is the graphic is beautiful. It's very interactive. You see quite a lot of things. Exactly. Same thing with mathematics. You see a lot of things, it becomes interesting and alive. And if you see nothing, then it's uh, blackness. And Alan says addictive, yes. Possibly addictive too, why not? Last game I've seen is The Last of Us, right? First initially it was boring, but uh, then I think the game actually, um, I enjoyed it. I finished the full game. But that was years ago. Yeah. Well, you see here, Christian says Last of Us is great. I, I did like their script. So, Another thing about uh, about uh, mathematics, of course, is is that uh, it, in my opinion, at least in my mind, uh, I see many relations uh, to the things that I read, the things that I think about, to uh, also some similes or parallels to your uh, existence, at least to my existence. Right. So, what I study ends up being like this, and I hope that uh, you will develop the ability to do the same. So let's just review where we left off. I actually, this is already something covered. Let's remember what is the derivative. And before I speak about it, I would be very happy to hear one of you and a person that even better, a person that is not entirely sure what it is. And I'm not here, if, if you're trying to understand it, I feel my heart bleeds for you, so to speak, even if you do not. But if you are like this, dead already, and I'm just talking to you, to a zombie, that really bothers me, of course. So what is uh, the derivative why do we care about it what's the idea anyone please Uh, so Rafid says derivatives are the instantaneous slope of any specific point in a function. It sounds pretty nice, uh, but just possibly instantaneous slope, a strange expression. Uh, could, could anybody give me a very simplistic down to earth explanation of what's the derivative? Why do we study it perhaps? There is, so Ikra says the rate of change of a function uh, that's perhaps true, but it's a bit vague. You see, uh, if, I, if, if I were to ask you something like, um, well, what, have, what animals have you seen in the zoo? Uh, the, and, uh, and, and you say, well, I've seen animals. And then nothing afterwards comes, right? So just it, it sounds like you haven't really looked at the animals at all. What do they have long teeth? Uh, do they have a trunk? Big ears, what is their color? Right, give me a lively description of what is the derivative. And uh, if you, do you remember at all any of the ideas that I said why the derivative was considered? Um, isn't it when um, you have, um, you trying to find the closest point to you try to find the closest two points within uh, within one singular line yes that's kind of uh, that's that's what we do to uh, calculate uh, the derivative so uh, so uh, that's already good it's getting there yes uh, so uh, zohib says it's a slope of the tangent line right let me again again try to remind you how uh, at least how i think of it okay so what you have is, and I hope you remember why it's an important idea, right? We are studying curves. 
The reason we want to study curves is, for example, maybe we want to construct a roller coaster or we want to understand uh, how a space shuttle will travel from one point to another. Or it could be something entirely unrelated um, by any such simplistic explanation to a derivative. Like let's say you want to estimate pi or you want to, uh, to, to just carry a, an entirely different project. Could be extremely far removed from what you uh, imagine the derivative uh, immediately relates to. And so what is the derivative? Uh, well, you have a curve. It's a complicated, uh, it's a complicated figure. A line is the simplest of curves, right? Yeah, it's the simplest of curves. You can see that if, you, if, I, if I'm holding two points, you can clearly trace a line connecting those two points. Agreed? Now, uh, what, what, what defines a line, you can see that I can make a line very steep or not very steep. Uh, it's the triangle that I produce this way, right? The two points that I'm holding here produce a hypotenuse of a certain right triangle. I can measure uh, the vertical leg divided by the horizontal leg, and I get proportion for that right triangle, which is the slope. Yeah? So, so I have a, that's just for a line. Now, if I take two points on the curve, that now uh, forms a line that goes through those two points. A tangent line goes through one point, at least locally. So what do I do? I pick a point Q, I slide it closer and closer to P, and uh, when I slide them closer, it's like the two points, they merge into one single point. Very simple, correct guys? I mean, I used to know how many words. I would have said this, two points, second. Merge one of the points to the first. Now it looks like it goes through one point. It looks like locally a tangent line, that uh, the line does not locally pierce. If I zoom in near P, the line touches uh, the curve only at one point, okay? So, then I mentioned uh, already in the past lecture that there are several definitions and those definitions we will throughout this course explore which one is better uh, and, uh, and when to employ which particular notation, okay? So uh, I, I introduced uh, roughly three notations and we truly spoke only about the first two. We will speak more about uh, notation three later in the course. So this was the definition of the derivative. Notice what, what happened here. Uh, we have the one point A and its vertical coordinates, y coordinate is f of a, and the sliding point, point q, it's x and f of x. And here it's the measurement of the slope. And by making x go to a, I am making uh, this point move closer to that point. Do you see where I trace it? So the point x comma f of x is moving closer to a comma f of a. Each point has two coordinates. Now I can express that same relationship in part two. All right, uh, but I can uh, I can I can say, for example, here in this no, in this notation, in this notation, I am speaking about uh, a point that is a-like, so it's an imperfect a, uh, and uh, and so I'm saying, look at it. This point is striving to be a, which means it's it's an actual a plus this imperfection, which is called a perturbation, and that perturbation goes to zero. Without you see. What you should do is, you see, you're not reading, let's say when you say, when you read the word all, you're not saying it's A, L, L. You're just right away getting at the meaning. Similarly, throughout this course, I hope I will train you to just look at the expression and see what is the meaning. What is the meaning behind this expression? And the meaning in both of them is the slope of the tangent line. Yes? Now, psycho so mathematically or logically, they are equivalent but psychologically one formula induces you to carry out an operation one way, another formula induces you to carry the operation possibly a different way. And uh, we, we asked uh, this problem, right? We already solved it. I'm not gonna uh, ask you to resolve it during class again, but we had minus two X squared plus five X plus 13. And I asked you to find the derivative using notation one and then using notation two. And we examined which of those notations uh, was better. So here is again that, that uh, problem with notation one, you group like to like, you simplify. In essence, what you do with notation one, you end up essentially factoring, right? Grouping like terms and then factoring. And eventually you factor out X minus A, simplify, and you get your answer. In notation two, with the polynomial, you have this uh, urge to expand. You have A plus H squared. When you square, you 
you have you feel this urge to expand the parentheses, and then you still uh, simplify terms, and eventually you get the same answer if you carry it correctly. Now, notation two was more costly. If you ever programmed anything, then you know that uh, if your program involves more lines, it's a more cumbersome problem. It runs slower. Okay, so notation one was actually a better notation. If you have a machine, of course, that can execute uh, with, with equal ease the operations involved in, in procedure one, procedure two, and then proce procedure two is already more difficult because it uses more symbols. Here I, uh, I try to show it using an algebraic function. So for algebraic function, for all the functions that we have considered up to this point, what is algebraic function? It's one that uses addition, multiplication, division and radicals. Make sense? It uses radicals, right? So that's, that's, that's the, so every polynomial is an algebraic expression because you are using addition and multiplication. You're not making use of the extra degrees of freedom of the extra operations. And so for all algebraic operations and that you arrive at uh, by, by trial and error or by just understanding what I just tell you now. Uh, I did not realize it until not my first semester in calculus. I tutored it, I taught it, I thought about it here and there, and then I realized that one notation is actually much better than another for particular problems. So here is um, just setting up the definition of the derivative using notation one. It involved 33 symbols, right? If I just set it up with notation two, it involves 43 symbols which means that uh, actually it would be more because expanding a plus h to the fourth power will involve uh, more symbols. But I would say roughly speaking, each, each line that you write, it will be extra 10 symbols that you are writing. Not only that, they are long, they look cumbersome, they will be bigger. At this expression, if you expand it, it will be very long, very big. It will confuse you. It will cause you to make far, uh, it's, it's increasing the likelihood that you will make an error. You understood? So this was uh, something that we talked about last time. I hope uh, you are, um, you're, you're clear on that guys, right? Uh, I, I, I see a few faces, which is nice, but I do not see them in high enough resolution to, to know if, if I'm just talking over your head. Oh, by the way, uh, before I forget this uh, uh, train of thought, you know, you are often very reserved, right? You do not like to express to me your grievances. And I know one grievance, I definitely know some people feel it. They think, well, this guy overcomplicates things. Yes? Right? Do, you, do you think this way? I, um, I cannot see your face too well. Do you think that I overcomplicate things? Alexei says a little. Well, I would very much, and Alan says sometimes, I would of course very much enjoy to hear your, um, and, and if somebody says occasionally a little, my God, so you are confessing, right? That's what you feel. I'm just making easy things very complicated. Well, easy things are perhaps more complicated than you can imagine, okay? Um, uh, Alexei, you, you raised the hand just before you do, let me quickly um, show you again, right? Do you, maybe you do not have my goal, the same goal in mind. I can tell you what is my goal. Your goal, or many people that are not interested in something, your goal is, my God, I just want to survive. I want to do the least amount of work possible and survive. That's not my goal. My goal, yes, yeah, so some people shake their hands, right? My goal is to teach you to think and feel calculus, right? Not even to think it, but to feel it. That's what I hope uh, to do, right? And, uh, and here is a typical book in physics. I have it uh, available here. It's, it's, an, it's an advanced introduction at MIT. So at that level, it only begins to be, when you say applied, it begins to, um, to be at a level where you actually are showing something, where you prove that you know something. MIT students, I, I've seen, right? Many of them, uh, they, even they, uh, they flunk out of this course. It's difficult. And it involves, I mean, if you understand uh, basic calculus, you can, supposedly you can kind of carry out those, uh, those calculations. So some of you have taken calculus before. Some of you here, by the way, do you recognize this thing? 
that's that's the Leibniz notation for the derivative that just uh, work. Right? Pretty much anywhere you open, you will recognize you have infinite series. Look at it; it's an infinite series. All those things that I will try to teach you even even now as we are in this course. One second. You don't look that uh, psyched and thrilled, actually, for the people that I see that I'm going to try to teach you that. Hmm? I just want to show you one particular thing before I, uh, I return to it. I hope it's inspiring. It definitely is inspiring to me. It's sad if it doesn't inspire you. Here. So some of you no shortcuts. You might have uh, taken calculus. Maybe you, you survived some sort of uh, third rate calculus course in high school. Maybe you did not survive it and you're retaking this course. But so, so you, you might have been taught some, some trick here. Solve a problem. You solved some problem. What problem did you solve truly? Right? Uh, you answer the stupid, the useless uh, question that somebody asks on some exam and uh, you forget about it. Here is uh, what mathematics really is. It's philosophy, it's a way of thinking. It's incorporated into your, uh, into your being. And in the questions are never uh, find the derivative of this function or integrate that function. No, uh, you have a particular phenomena that you try to understand, that you try to model. Now, uh, how do you model that phenomena, right? So you're trying to understand how a rocket is flying, right? And a rocket is a complicated system, even that it's, it's ejecting uh, fuel, it becomes lighter with time and uh, it has a particular thrust. It has all sorts of complicated features about it. And you try to understand how it moves from one moment to the next. And you see in those formulas, as you are setting them up, you are using principles of physics and you are using um, definition of the derivative. You set things up and then you're, in your mind, you look at this thing, oh my God, this is part, this M plus delta M looks to me like part of the definition of the derivative, okay? You understand what I mean? You, you're, you're recognizing that something is, uh, it looks like another, uh, another object that you already recognize. That's one of the things that I try to train you. So that to first of all, recognize that uh, one problem that you're solving relates to an entirely different situation. Good. I'm trying to teach you to think calculus, not to solve some stupid problems. I hope you are with me. At least uh, the, those are my those that are my students. Maybe ten or five or two. Those are the people I'm teaching. The rest I'm just you know, I'm just here. So, back to the material. So we have a function. Uh, we have let's say a function like f of x equal to x squared. And we can use the definition of the derivative to find uh, f prime of a, which is 2a. This is the slope of the tangent line to the curve x squared at the particular point a. Okay, so it means uh, if, if the point is 2, slope will be, if the x coordinate of that point is 2, the point is then 2 comma 4, the slope will be 4. If the point, if the x coordinate of it is 3, the full point is 3 comma 9, uh, then the slope is six. That's what this is saying. So the derivative is a function. The slope is a function of the point on the curve at which you are zooming, of the x-coordinate of that point. And similar, if you take, let's say, f of x equal to root of x, uh, this we can define, we can, we can verify this is the slope using the definition of the derivative. Now, it is sometimes convenient to have them, uh, um, to have f prime be the function not of a, but of the previous variable be a function of x, good? As in uh, this definition will make that true. So here I shifted my perspective. Now x here, f prime of x means that x comma f of x is that point p at which I zoom in. And so I have to give different label to the sliding point, to the point q that I'm moving to point p. And I call it z, f of z. 
and then z has to go to x. Okay, that if that ex that talks about exactly the same uh, uh, the same thing, just uses different symbols. And two, uh, we have this limit, which is just uh, the notation two version, right? It's just x plus h minus f of x over h. Uh, so let's begin with this problem, guys. Here is uh, here is my uh, problem that I want you to take derivative for. And before you do, could you please tell me? For this function, which notation do you prefer to use? Do you prefer notation one or notation two? And I would like to hear, of course, why in the comments. That's a simple question. Time. Yes, uh, notation one or notation two for this problem here. Okay. You, by the way, again, right, if you do not agree, guys, I, I hope you understand uh, how am I talking, right? So, so many classes, you think I need to answer what the teacher is, is telling me, right? So the teacher says one thing, I have to answer like what the teacher expects from me. That's not, I hate that, right? I'm not teaching you to balance balls. You can uh, argue with me if you don't agree with me. Okay, so notation one and, and my reasoning, the, the one thing I can say is that you would have fewer symbols that you are writing. And if you write fewer things, you can solve it faster. Okay, so take, uh, take the derivative of this function by definition using whichever notation you prefer and tell me what it is. And uh, yes, pull up a little so we can see the first. Uh... No, you know, I don't want you to see it. It has to come from your heart. Mm -hmm. I mean, see what, what do you need to see it for? If you, if, if, if you know it, if you feel it, right, you, you can say what, what's the color of grass. You don't need to think about it. Yes. If you forget the formula, guys, do not look it up. Reason it out from scratch. That's how I learned it. <laughs> brings warm memories to me.
Ah, Dante, the Moazin, I meant. Remember this, right? Yes. Wonderful, full, very good. Uh, you just, uh, in one place you wrote in A and the other in X. That's uh, possibly a typo. Well, if you want to say hello to the beast, I'm going to let him go. Well, let's get going with the solution as we have quite a lot to cover, okay? Now, if you know what you're doing, if you're not blind in a forest, you know, in, you know, have you ever been in a big forest and you know, you, you think you're walking straight and you end up coming to the same location where you started from? That's because you have no idea, you have no dead reckoning. Where are you going? Once you know where you're going, that's pretty simple here. So I set it up, uh, I use, uh, because it's an algebraic, uh, function, I'm using notation one. I'm using this notation. Here is the setup. I hope many of you got to that setup, correct? You were able to write this thing here. This is a very simply slope. This is the fixed point, x comma this thing. 
z comma that thing is the sliding point. And then all I do is I group like with like, just to be sure, you see, I group this with this. I group this with this and separate. Yes? So then once I do that, I have z squared minus x squared over z minus x. And I can take limit of the sum is sum of the limits. And then I factor the three, I have root of nine minus z minus root of nine minus x over z minus x. Yes? Here I can factor it out. Oh, somebody else, Alisa, you have your own thing, I see. Show me, Alisa, what is that thing? Let me see it. It's black. No, it's also black. Uh, it's it's a boy or a girl? Maybe He's a copy a of mine. Huh? He's a girl. Ah, good for you. Thank you. Yeah, I thought it. I thought it might be a girl, but yeah, it's hard. To, when they're black, it's hard to see. So. Yeah. So. Yes. Okay. Ah, the, you, you also have a cut, Dante, that's nice. We'll have a show and tell of the cuts and then we'll, we'll share recipes, right? So back to this, uh, uh, this problem. So we factor out uh, z squared minus x squared, it's z plus x, z minus x. Yeah, we can have a show and tell of animals. So z plus x, z minus x divided by z minus x, we cross it out and uh, then here look at it what what am i guided by when i solve this limit apologies another thing you see rabbits so somebody has a rabbit uh, oh rabbits are my favorite animals I, I already know where to get a few other rabbits in that in the other class sorry apologies let's get back to it so this is a minus b and um, I, you see, I want to get rid of the square root. So I can multiply by a plus b. That's called multiply by the conjugate. I do that in the numerator and I do that in the denominator. And I only, uh, you see, one thing is guys, you, you don't necessarily like to do uh, extra tasks, but you do them in places where that's uh, waste, wasteful, right? So do not multiply in the denominator. You, don't, you never wanted to have it on the denominator in the first place. You, want, you multiplied only to get rid of the square root in the numerator. Do you understand what I'm saying, guys? Uh, why, why did I put uh, root of nine minus z plus root of nine minus x? I just, ha I just noticed the pattern a minus b. I wanted to multiply by a plus b. Yes? And uh, I, I only divided by this expression because I had to pay for this. You see, you want something, you pay for it. So the numerator here becomes nine minus Z minus nine minus X. I can simplify it. And in this part, I mean, this part is very easy, right? So uh, the, the, the last part, once I cross things away, uh, Z is becoming X. So I essentially I'm seeing X plus X. This is an actual X plus something that is a fake X. It's becoming X. So it be now becomes X plus X. So that's why this part is two X. Good. Now here I, simplify the nines go away I have and I can factor out the minus so it's z minus x times minus and I can simplify this one out I can cross out z minus x and now there is no impediment when I push z to x that now becomes root of nine minus x plus root of nine minus x so it's two root of nine minus x in the denominator and numerator because of this three and minus one it's minus three you get it let me know guys if uh, if you are having any problems uh, here if if you if you got it please write uh, something like yes or got it so i i, I can see in the comments uh, who is following
So it should take you, when you know what you're doing, uh, such operations take you five minutes less. It's, it's automatic. Good? Let's move on. Yes, uh, Mustafa, where do you want, what do you want to see here? Uh, which line should I re-explain or talk about? Just uh, let me know. You all know guys that my notes are posted online, correct? It's not news to you that uh, I'm reading it from my website and you have access to the same thing that I'm reading. And of course, I would be of course very glad if you read it, especially once we cover the lecture, if you look through it and you think, oh, I understand everything here. Good, so uh, may I move forward? Great. So now let's talk about the relationship between f of x and f prime x. What's the wait, wait, I'll say, Yeah. About the previous, can you scroll up a little bit? Yeah. So the derivative is 2x plus that, you know, the, the whole rat. Uh, exactly. That's that's the derivative once I do it by definition. And uh, yes. So when, what, does when it, we, what does it mean? Because it's a lot more simple when it's I don't, like, I understand. What it means? Yeah, so that, that's, uh, that's here, basically the slope. Uh, okay, what, well, it means the slope, right? Uh, except you have to be careful. The x here is, is the point at which you zoom in. So you have a graph, x comma f of x. Where, well, f of x is, uh, this, this is the second coordinate of the graph, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, you zoom in at an arbitrary point on the graph. And when you zoom in at an arbitrary point, you will see uh, the tangent line. We actually are going to talk about it uh, right below. And the tangent line will have a slope. That's the formula of its slope. The slope is determined by the x-coordinate, okay? okay uh, gotcha. For example, if I zoom in at coordinate uh, equal to zero, I will see two times zero plus minus three divided by two root of nine minus zero, right? So that would be the slope that I will see. So in other words, the slope will simply be minus uh, three divided by uh, two times three, which is just simply uh, minus one half. The slope okay. uh, when I zoom in at zero is minus one half. Good. Would, would the derivative of a derivative be the acceleration? Yes. Okay. Uh, that's one of the interpretations. That's excellent, right? Wonderful. Derivative of the derivative is the acceleration. If, of course, uh, the, we, we, we have the function defined in terms of time, and that's position function. Derivative of position is velocity. Derivative of velocity is acceleration. But there are many interpretations. You see, the most interesting things, guys, when you think, okay, slope of a tangent line, but the most interesting ideas it's like, you understand, you, you, you have seen flies. The fly is banging against the window, right? Because it thinks, well, I want to exit. I, I see the sign, it's over here, I want to exit. But for the fly to actually get out of the room, it has to go back into the darkness, fly around and, and uh, make a very, very complicated path out, okay? So that's really, really what happens in mathematics. It's very complicated, right? It's just what, what the derivative really is, is just a chain in reasoning that can lead you into, you know, can connect to something that initially has nothing to do with slopes or uh, with any tangent lines, anything like that. You understand? I tried to show you with the needle, right? And probability. You understand? So the ideas are just very complicated. They, they, you, you build a structure with it. And um, uh, Brandon, with what I did in three, with uh, the, the beginning, what three? It's very simple, guys, algebra. There was, uh, there was a three, correct? Here was the three. There was a three here, there was a three here, I simply factored it out. So uh, if you stay after class, guys, all right, we can, we can discuss very patiently every single line. We can solve many problems like this. Unfortunately, semester is much more limited than, uh, than it's, it's practical, right? We have a limited semester. So here is my, uh, my first question. I wonder what you would think, guys, right? Truly. So the earth. Is it flat? You've heard of all those uh, theories, uh, flat earthers, right? Apparently, I had a student in my calculus class some years ago, and he was extremely irritated by the flat earthers. Yeah, oh boy, exactly. Oh, yes, it is. I'm asking you, you, you understand why I'm asking you this question? Uh, I'm sure that you, you know what the earth is like. You, you would say, well, it's round, yes? My question is, uh, well, if you are sure, then tell me why are you sure of that? Flat bread, etc. Right? I want to know uh, why are you? Well, it's a sphere. It's not exactly a sphere. 
it's uh, it's called uh, ellipsoid. You know, it's somewhat flattened at the poles, right? It's not very noticeable, but it's kind of there is oh, it's a complicated shape, but more or less, let's say a sphere for us, right? For our purposes, how do you know that it is a sphere? Perhaps I mean I'm not asking in mathematical question. I mean uh, just wondering. Let's say people people I, you know what what irritates me? I walk around and I see expressions like we believe in science. I think my freaking god, I just want to murder those people. Right. Yeah, the, the science is not is, is the opposite of belief. Science is what is basically it means oh I understand it and here are my arguments and you just you have a chain of logic. So you see you have people that are for some reason uh, find it uh, obs an obsession of them to uh, for them to prove that the earth is flat. Yes. Now you don't have that obsession perhaps right? and perhaps you don't care whether or not it's flat or or round. But uh, um, I'm assuming many of you think it's round. And if you think it's round, can you give me a very, very simple argument of why you believe that it's round? NASA? Whoa, yeah, well, that's, that's funny. But uh, do, you, do you believe in NASA? You know, NASA it is what they do. You know, here is a brick connected, right? They, they, they are not really... They are very behind. So Pavel is science, right? And what does it mean? It's a complicated question. Do you understand that uh, satellite images, Ikra, but satellite images, people would say, well, they are, uh, they are fake. I, I mean, it's nice, right? I, I don't think um, the world is flat. Mm -hmm. um, the reason why for that is because um, I think in space, there's different type of forces out there, right? It's just a, it's just a whole force, right? If all the force go into one central point, right? Um, it depends. I don't know. It really depends. If all the force go into one central point, right? It's not gonna be like all the way flat. It's gonna, you know, it's like crumbling a ball, right? All that force becomes into, um, into like almost like a, I would say almost like a circle, but it's kind of. Oh, you, 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 yes, we're actually gonna talk about such things in optimization, right? Why sphere specifically? But, uh, but um, you see, I'm, I'm just, just wondering, right? You understand that, that, first of all, that people realized the, the shape of the earth uh, many, many years ago before photographs, before they could move uh, into space, right? Newton could, you know, Newton uh, figured out a way to, uh, to um, measure the mass of the earth, you understand? It's pretty incredible that, uh, that you could just figure such a complicated thing out. Um, well, so I just wonder, well, none of you have been to an airplane or something, right? You have never uh, looked out of the window of an airplane or have you spoken to people uh, through your phone? You can, you can speak to people in another place of the earth and see that uh, they uh, have an entirely different time. So it's morning here and night somewhere else. Yes. You have so many very simple uh, things to, uh, to indicate that, well, it doesn't seem like if, if, if the earth were flat, that it would be the situation right because if it's flat for example here is a here is the sun right uh, now uh, when 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 the sun is invisible it should be invisible everywhere around the, the earth for example right you have all such uh, uh, such non-mathematical because you have devices because you can communicate all sorts of interesting uh, very simple ways of noticing that but uh, next question is essentially what do you think so for so many years and it was so natural to assume that the earth is just a plane, a flat extended surface? Because we, we don't see no curves. Uh, yes, well, um, you, you, Muhammad says that you can see something in the ocean, right? Are you joking? I say, uh, first of all, I don't believe in anything. That's one of the first points that I'm trying to tell you. I either know or I do not know, right? I can tell you what I know, that, and, and hopefully with some degree of accuracy, and, and things that I do not know, right? And uh, you can study uh, physics and all sorts of interesting things um, about it, right? But anyway, my point here, my point here is uh, is this, guys, right? So. The, you see that, that the reason that uh, the Earth, at least if, if the Earth were a perfect huge sphere, let's say it's, you know, you see mountains and you see also a complicated landscape, but let's say the Earth, if it were 
a perfect uh, sphere, huge perfect sphere, and you were to land on this Earth, you would think that the Earth looks like a plane. You understand? It would look to you like a plane. And um, the reason for that is, um, is, that the Earth, is that a sphere is a differentiable or smooth surface. And we are studying curves. We're studying here curves. Imagine that uh, you have a giant curve somewhere in space and you are a small insect that's about to land at the point P on that curve. And the question is, uh, when you land at that curve, what would uh, it look to you like? And uh, here is uh, how I would try to, uh, to explain it to you, okay? So if the curve is differentiable, that means when I, uh, that, that, that at the point P, I can construct a tangent line, good? Now, what happens if you are landing, uh, landing at the point P? It means that your horizons are becoming, uh, your, your horizon is becoming very narrow. You see, you see less and less of the curve. Imagine I zoom in, I zoom in, I zoom in. So uh, eventually all you see on the screen, this is the right edge of the screen and this is the left edge of the screen. Do you agree? And if I zoom in more, the right and left edge on the screen and on this picture, they will look very close to the point P. Do you agree? I'm saying something that's extremely easy, but uh, using words for it. So it might be complicated, right, for you. Do, you. do you process what I'm trying to tell you guys? I'm trying to explain to you why uh, differentiable curves, differentiable curves are those for which I can calculate the tangent line. Why will they look like a straight line? You see what happens for, why did people think that Earth is flat? Is because uh, uh, they were small bugs walking on a differentiable surface. Do you understand what I'm saying? So Earth is very big compared to people, compared to a person. So, uh, so if you're somewhere on Earth, it looks to you like a plane. That's a, that's a Calc 3 version of a tangent line. It's a tangent plane. Yes, so if we're zooming in on this curve, I'm claiming it will look to you like a tangent line, kind of like this. You see, imagine I'm zooming in this curve. You zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. And it essentially starts looking like a line. Yes? Now, why is that the situation? Well, when you're zooming in, imagine, uh, imagine uh, a bouquet of lines. I drew it uh, so they look like flowers. So bouquet of lines, which means I have lines going through point P through another point in the curve. Yes? So, the, those are, this is basically what a bug uh, at point P will be able to see. It's not just the, the lines I drew, it's every possible line that goes through point P and every possible point that the bug can see on this curve. Yes? Now, when I, when I zoom in, uh, eventually you can imagine that what I see on this curve is, is my screen, is my screen, yes? Can I zoom in here? Let's see, how do you zoom in this here? here. So I'm zooming in at this curve, right? And you can see that the edges, I will probably not be able to zoom in uh, well enough, right? But uh, the edges, uh, the right and the left edges, they become the edges of my screen. They become pretty much my horizon. Yes? They will become my horizon. Yes? So what would happen to this bouquet of flowers? This is what happens to this bouquet of flowers. You see, so, so the, bouquet, the flowers are going through P. You, you have this uh, our, our glass shape form here, right? So you have this uh, our glass shape. So the flowers are just uh, all over here. But once you zoom in a little bit more, you, here is your horizon. So it's a little less uh, spread. Zoom in more, it will be less and less spread. Am I losing you guys? I mean, I, I, I stare into your faces and I think, ooh. Yes, so R R Rachel, you are telling me with your eyes I'm, I'm losing you, yes? Yes, well, I'm tired. I, in the morning, apparently, I lost them slightly less. Here, let me try again. Are you with me? What, let, let, let's, let's do it actively. What does it mean for my curve to be differentiable at the point P? 
differential about the point P, let me just give you a hint. It means that I can calculate the derivative at point P. Are you with me? Differentiable, I can calculate uh, derivative at point P. Tell me what does it mean that I can calculate derivative at point P? It means, I'm not asking for anything complicated, I hope. A central point. I, I can calculate the slope of a line, right? Which means what? Which means uh, I take a point uh, Q and if I slide the point Q and I continue to calculate slope, I will, I will arrive eventually at one slope. Do you agree, Rachel? Do you agree, Nassim? Do you agree, full? Yes? If I, when, when differentiable, it means I take a point P and I don't, don't have to take the, the point Q to the right. I could take it to the left. No matter from which direction I take, if I make the point Q uh, merge into point P, you see this point, right? You see it. It's the cursor. It's merging into point P. As I continue calculating uh, uh, slopes, I see eventually that I get a, a particular slope, one unique slope. Now, when I do limits, guys, what, does, what do limits truly do? It means that uh, if my point Q is very close to point P, then all the slopes of all my lines that I can calculate in the region are essentially the same. Do you understand what is limit? Limit is pushing it to the extreme, but it's, re it's really trying to push the, uh, the similarity to the extreme, right? When I say limit of, uh, f, of, uh, of f of x over of f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a approaches to f prime of a, what I'm saying is uh, the slopes that I can calculate if I select the point very close to p, the slope of any line going through this uh, point pq, through any, any point uh, q is essentially the same. Am I with you? Or are you better with me? I'm definitely with you. Are you with me? You follow what I'm trying to say, guys? So it, you might think, well, very complicated, what not. You see, using those ideas, uh, you can just right away reason things out, right? Pretty complicated things, actually, which I hope to show you, okay? So then my question is this. If you understand what I just say, I'm asking you now to imagine. You see, imagine what happens if a bug, a very microscopic bug, is flying onto this curve, right? So the way you see it now, it means the bug is rather far. So, so when you're far from something huge, you see, uh, you see the object in full, or at least you see a bigger segment of the object, right? So do you agree that if, if a bug is flying here, this is a bug, I mean, imagine a, a bug is flying uh, from outside the screen into the, into the screen, right? As the bug is flying into the screen, what's gonna happen? For the bug, the left uh, and, and right blue line, they are going to uh, become, they, go, they, are going to, they are going to look farther and farther apart. Do you agree? They are going to form horizon, the horizons eventually. You, you make sense? I mean, if I were to zoom in eventually, uh, then uh, this left bar will be the left edge of my screen. This right bar would be the right edge of my screen. Do you agree? And then for any other two lines, even closer to A, uh, that will be uh, the same. Yes? So in effect, what, 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 what is this object going to look like when I zoom in? Exactly. Well, so not, not just a point because you're, whenever you're here, you can look to your left and to the right. It would look like a straight line, precisely. Do you understand how I know it would look like a straight line, guys? I know that, you see, I use theoretical uh, reasoning here. So if a slope exists, if I know that for this curve, uh, the limit exists, that means that uh, the slopes become tame. You understand? Well, what is it that I'm observing? When the bug is looking on this curve, when he looks from point P to this point, you have this line. When you look from point P to this point, you have this line, you have many lines. So I call it a bouquet of lines. Truly, it would uh, look like, like this. So it would be like of this full red uh, uh, shape, you see, because you have tons of lines. You agree? Tons of lines that you, in, that you, that you look here. Now, uh, because the bug is small, as, you, as it's closer and closer to point P, its horizon is much closer to P. You understand? You're zooming in, that means you're, you're not, eventually you're not seeing all those points, right? You're zooming in, you're not seeing whatever is to the left of the blue line here, and whatever is to the right of the right blue line here. And for any closer lines around P, it will be the same situation, which means that uh, the points Q that you're, you're, you're standing at P and the points Q that you are able to see are closer and closer to the point P. Are you with me? 
And so every other, every point, basically we understand that the derivative is not just the limit. The derivative is I have two points here and I calculate slope. So all the slopes that I can possibly see will look like that same one slope, the derivative slope. <coughs> yes? It's, it's a, it, I'm, I'm trying to make you imagine, right? It's a picture. So that means that the line that I will see is the tangent line. You understand? It's, uh, it's like this curve is composed of microscopic tangent lines. It's it, the actual image of a differentiable curve. It's a very good image. It's like a, a lots of segments. It's like a chain of tiny segments of straight lines. That's what a differentiable curve is. Do you understand? Wonderful. And the rest of you, do you understand guys? Uh, or my God, what is he talking about? And uh, again, guys, right? Let, let's do this. If you think that I'm telling you something too complicated, you show me that you can solve the physics book. If you can solve that physics, the question is the physics book, then yes, uh, I am overcomplicating it. If not, then I'm not overcomplicating. I'm making it too simple, right? Because if you think my way or maybe some other ways, but, but think then you can solve more complicated questions and not uh, the boring questions that are uh, usually assigned for this course. Good. So this is my attempt to draw a picture of it, you see? So here, this is the set of all lines that go through point P, but uh, the horizon is closer to P. And as it becomes closer to P, the hourglass merges into, essentially into a line, into the tangent line. And this can be exploited at great efficiency uh, for, for many, so here is, here is the equation. You see this thing? This is the equation of the tangent line. The graph of the curve looks like the equation of the tangent line. Yes? And we will try, definitely with a few further lectures, I will try to show you uh, how. Here is one simple, uh, simple application of it. So if a function is differentiable, and do you understand what differentiable means? In other words, at point, if I can, you can if, if everywhere I zoom in, it starts to, uh, if, if I, I can calculate the slope of the tangent line at every point I pick, that's what it means to be differentiable. So if a function is differentiable, then it is continuous at the point of differentiability. Can you try to argue about it? Can you try to argue this point without uh, complicated mathematics? You understand? I want to see if you are, if you are seeing the concept rather than uh, just pushing numbers. I'm saying we are dealing with a curve and the curve is differentiable. The claim is that uh, the curve is also continuous. So it's differentiable at point A, it's continuous at point A. Do you see why? Um, I got a question. Yes. So can you um, give us like another, um, I would say visual example of how would you um, use this? I, I think the flat earth was pretty good, but can you give me like a, another, um, another visual? You, you open the, the physics book, you will see uh, every, almost every single example is of that. Oh, okay. Afterwards, after class, I can show you, right, uh, of how it works. Okay. And there will be, uh, when we talk about trigonometry, there will be others, right? But uh, yes, so, so here is how it's supposed to work, why, why this concept should be obvious to you. If a function is differentiable, uh, then it is continuous. Now, if, if the word differentiable and continuous don't mean anything to you, then of course it's not obvious. It's like a foreign language. So could anybody remind me what is continuity? And you don't have to give me complicated formulas. Complicated, complicated description possibly means that you don't understand. Give me a very simple description. What is continuity? It's just a continuing line. Oh, well, you use the same slope. word. Uh, oh. You use the same word. So you have to try to find another word. I will tell you afterwards what, what's my, exp my explanation. Unbroken segment, Hadi, wonderful, beautiful, right? Unbroken segment is, uh, as I would, would say it, I will just say a little bit more about it, okay? Uh, so 
uh, Christian, you say well, the, the function gives a line without any breaks or faults. Well, you say a line, right? Line means uh, straight line, you know? The word straight line is just redundant. So uh, does, is this what it means? So let me remind you what is continuity intuitively. Continuity means a function is continuous if its graph is a connected graph. In other words, if the graph is one piece. Right, what is one piece? It's a here, here, this graph is not one piece because I can push or pull my right segment of the piece and it does not pull the left segment of the piece. You see that? That's not continuous. And this is even worse, right? Not continuous. Infinite limit Nassim is not uh, necessarily a consequence of discontinuity, okay? Uh, you understand guys? So my, so my question is this, right? So. If the function is differentiable, then it's a whole piece. How is it intuitive? If the, why is it intuitive? Can you see that? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question one more time? Well, would, would you try, you would, can you try to repeat uh, the question or yourself? Maybe it would be better. No? I'm asking this. Uh, if we, we know that we have a differentiable curve at the point A, right? It's a differentiable curve. Uh, prove that or explain why it should be continuous at that point. Is it, does it make sense what I'm asking? Are you playing uh, poker with me guys? You said to prove how there would be a curve? No, of course not. I, I, I just said this. If a curve is differentiable, show to me that it must be continuous. Why is that obvious? In other words, you see, if, it, if it's obvious, it, an animation plays in your mind. You can draw a picture for yourself uh, and then uh, talk about it. Well, full, very good. Essentially, uh, my point. Right. Eric, the word eat is very ambiguous. I don't know what eat is. Americans use the word eat all the time, but uh, without remembering what it refers to. Well, I don't know what, what it means for a function not to repeat. Uh, you will see a line if you zoom in, not if you zoom out. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, uh, you seem confused. Uh, let me tell you a little bit more about it, right? So the confusion here is a curve, right? Here is a curve. And if I ask you, uh, you were an intelligent fly, and I asked you verify uh, whether or not this curve is differentiable at the point, uh, well, at this point, let's say, at this point. I asked you to verify whether or not the, the curve is differentiable at this point. You don't know the formula for this, right? And you, and you can fly, right? What would you do? Well, very simply, you would f you here you would fly, you would into, fly closer to the point. into this region. You will fly into this region. You know you're going in, in, to investigate. You are flying into this region, and here you are, right? Think of yourself as a, as tiny, very tiny compared to this curve. Yeah, so, and, and if you're saying it's differentiable at this point, what are you, what are you essentially verifying? You are zooming in on this, uh, on this curve, zooming in and look at it. And what are you going to see? If it's differentiable at this point, you report uh, that you are seeing a line. Isn't it uh, simple? You zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, and it will start looking like a straight line. Can you imagine that? That's what differentiable means geometrically. You understand? Very simple, right? What I imagine is, okay, I, just like with, with Earth, I fly to this location, 
as I fly closer and closer and closer, I stop seeing the other edges. You see, that this is a curve, but I stop seeing whatever is outside of the circle. I fly even closer, I, I see my horizon is becoming very narrow. You agree? I fly closer, my horizon is even more narrow. Right, and as the whole, in other words, whatever is in the circle occupies my full screen, my full uh, field of view. And if you understood the previous explanation, that means I should start seeing a straight line. There is no difference, right? Differentiable means I start seeing a straight line. You mean uh, other than coordinates? I'll mention that. I guess it, it's not supposed to be vertical because vertical straight lines don't have a slope. The fact that you were able to calculate a slope means that you are seeing a straight line. You follow? That's the, the differential geometry perspective. It's a very, very important perspective if you want to study manifolds, if you want to study some really cool things in physics, okay? So it looks like a line. Now the question is, if it looks like a line, will it be continuous? A line, is it one piece or not one piece? Uh, exactly, Pavel, right? So, uh, so differentiable means that the curve very, it's called locally a straight line, you understand? Or, or um, yeah, so, so locally, it looks like a straight line. If you zoom in somewhere else, it would look locally like a different straight line. So, you know, all this talking about uh, curving spaces, this is what they're talking about, you see? When you say a space is curving or locally Euclidean, locally Euclidean means, let's say, our space looks like like a like an extended grid of coordinates right x y z coordinates but if you zoom out of that space somehow it would start curving it it's kind of hard to imagine because it's curving uh, it's a it's a 3d space you understand but uh, here it's it's a one dimensional space that's uh, curving inside of a two dimensional framework okay excellent R ratio makes sense everybody makes sense so uh, differentiable very simply zoom in looks like a straight line and, uh, and is it continuous? Naturally, the, the curve is continuous if it looks like a straight line because uh, straight lines are, are naturally continuous pieces. Naturally, just straight line, it's a continuous piece. Of course, this is just a, a verbal argument. I'm going, going to give you a formal proof of it, okay? I hope you understood my explanation. It's, a, it's, a, it's just, in other words, when you do, you just, you just feel what the answer is without uh, anything complicated. Uh, so, Let's carry out the formulas, okay? So in terms of uh, the mathematical formal definition of continuity, I want to verify that taking limit as X goes to A of F of X is F of A. And I, I do not know how to operate using this limit because uh, I know nothing about this function. I only know that this limit exists. Do you agree? Differentiable means that I can calculate a slope. This limit, uh, when I carry it out, will give me the slope. Before I continue, are you with me guys? More of you should say yes, and, but don't lie. If you're not with me, again, we talk about it, right? And uh, co complex, you're saying, well, you're, you're, on the, you're just playing a video. You should kind of visualize. I, I, see, I imagine myself as a fly and I'm zooming in and I can see the curve turning into a line. You see, I imagine something like this. Look at it. I zoom in, right? And it starts looking like a straight line. But if I were to zoom out, it doesn't look like a straight line. Zoom in, straight line, zoom out not a straight line. Good. So my question is now we do it formally, right? So uh, formally continuity at point A means that limit as X goes to A of F of X equals to F of A. And that's to, to indicate, uh, how we remember how we indicated this idea of, of the graph being one piece connected, right? It means that move from the left or from the right along the curve, you merge in the same location. And so that uh, the location is fused, uh, that's the point F of A where it fuses. Does it make sense? So this, this particle F of A is where the curve is attached. So how do I uh, evaluate this limit? Very simply, this is the limit of continuity where I begin. And I then try to uh, make it look like this thing. You see, it's, it's, like, it's what I meant about the forest, right? If you understand what you're trying to do, you're trying to make this limit look like this limit because this limit Hypothetically, you know how to evaluate. This limit is the slope, okay? That's how mathematics works. You, you are not necessarily calculating actual things. You are calculating, you're, you're playing with concepts. <coughs> 
So this limit is f of a plus f of x minus f of a. And then all I have to do is just divide and multiply by x minus a. Top and bottom, divide and multiply. I push the limit. Now the limit of f of a is just f of a. And then this is my f prime. And this limit is zero. So I use uh, limit laws and I see that my limit is f of a, which means the function is continuous. I hope guys, you see, if you think it's strange, that's kind of, a, you need to train your abstract muscle. It's very natural. Did you understand my explanation? Did you understand what I calculated here? It just, you see, uh, you are, you develop, you're, you're so often surprised. You're so uncomfortable with intuitive reasoning that uh, you, you know, you have to have formal arguments. Right? And, and the more you know, the more uh, paranoid you become. Right. So, you know, people, people think that they say this is like that. Right. So um, you do not know most of you that the earth is round because you cannot argue for it. If you cannot argue for it, then you don't know it. Right. You might uh, believe it. You, you don't doubt it. That's a different story. Not doubting it's called religious dogma. And uh, belief in science is the most disgusting thing that you can possibly hear. It's just, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's the same as pretty much a person is just, instead of having one religion, just has another religion, but uh, there is nothing here, right? It's supposed to be uh, based on your ideas, on your concepts. Then let me ask you this question. Differentiability implies continuity. That's we verified. What about the other direction? Does continuity imply differentiability? I would be very interested to know what you say. Christian says no. Uh, uh, so it, continuity does not imply differentiability. You understand implies in other words, suppose that I know that my uh, function is differentiable or that my curve is differentiable. Does it mean that it's, uh, sorry, it's continuous, right? Did I say differential? I don't know what I said. My curve is continuous. Do I know it's differentiable? Wait, can I, can I say? Yeah, go ahead. I would, I'm uh, very interested. So, the uh, differentiability is when you have to zoom in, right? So, if if you have something continuous, so it doesn't the the line doesn't break, so you're so you're asking whether you're zoomed in. No, uh, well, again, right? What I'm maybe if the line doesn't break, well, obviously doesn't mean you have to zoom in, right? Uh, differentiability, the differentiable curve is what it means that anywhere you look at the curve, if you look close enough, it looks like yeah. a line, correct? That's the geometric interpretation of differentiability. In terms of calculation, it means you can calculate a slope. But if you can calculate a slope of what? Of a line. Mm -hmm. Yes? So differentiability yeah. geometrically means you look at the curve close enough, it looks like a line. So the, uh, that's what you do in computer, uh, in computer animations. How do you think computers are modeling fabric or, or movement, whatnot? Right? Computers just take what you call triangles. And triangles are very easy to transform. You, you have linear transformations. You can move triangles, right? So you move one triangle, move another triangle, and many, many triangles attached like in a chain mill can simulate a fabric. You see this fabric, right? You can imagine it's made of many tiny uh, triangles. And each triangle is a piece of a uh, plane, okay? So that's a two-dimensional version of differentiability, right? Is that, is that something locally looks like, um, like a plane? In, uh, in one dimension, it means that a curve is differentiable if, it, if it's a chain, a chain mail of line segments. It's many tiny microscopic line segments, essentially, right? Okay. Make right. Sense? So, so, mm -hmm. so if I have differentiability, it's made of uh, tiny microscopic line segments uh, attached to each other. Uh, we already proved, in, first, intuitively, we see that, it's, uh, that it means continuity. And then we, we made the formal proof that, uh, that differentiability implies continuity, yes? Mm -hmm. And now I'm asking the other direction. I have a continuous function. Does it mean uh, that function um, is differentiable? I have a curve that's continuous. In other words, the, it's one whole piece. It's called connected. The graph of the function is connected. Does it mean it's differentiable? Which means, does it mean that it locally, it looks like line segments? Oh, Everywhere you zoom I in, it looks like a line so. segment. Maybe. You understand my question, first of all. Right? So before yeah. you answer anything, do you understand visually what am I asking? Yeah. 
Yes. Uh, if, if it doesn't I, break, I understand it. Yes. If it doesn't bridge, break, then you can always zoom yeah. in and see a line. So that's always... differentiability, right? If it doesn't break, yeah. when you zoom in at any point, do you always see a line? Yeah. You see, when you, when you put it this way and you yeah. see it in front of your eyes, how can you forget? It's obvious. I mean, it's, okay. it, the question is obvious, right? So the question, the answer might not be. So what do you think? So it's yes then. Both so ways. you're saying yes, every continuous function, you're zooming in, you're seeing a line, yes? Yeah, I think so. Okay, great. Joshua says yes. Who else says yes? I was able to convince one person. Lisa says yes. Arik says yes. What about Rachel? What do you say, Rachel? I'm always interested in, you say no? All right. And James, what do you say? And Pavel, what do you say? Um, I mean, I said um, from a perspective, um, it depends, but right now it's a yes. Yeah, I mean, don't worry. I mean, I'm not going to shoot you, right? I mean, why are you oh, no, worried no. about... No, because like from a perspective, when you, like like you said, once you zoom into that, um, when you zoom into the um, when you zoom in, you actually see a straight line, and then when you zoom out, it's like oh, you can't actually see the curve. That's that's why I said it. It really depends how you you know. What, what, what does your mind tell you? Pretty much. I mean, depends or not. I mean, it, 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 would you be sure that if it's a continuous curve, that if you zoom in on it, it looks like straight line at the point where you zoomed in? Oh, then. I mean, I would still say yes. Okay, so you are with uh, with the okay, so Christian says yes, and you are saying yes, and does Pavel say yes? I would say I, I still think it's usually no. Okay, so know, you're, you're saying you you you're even saying usually no. Well, maybe yeah. you should know. If you're Polish, then you should know who is Banach, right? Do you know Banach? Uh, Banach is a is a great mathematician. Uh, from the I've heard the name, but I, I don't know much. All right. Well, well, we'll see. Guys, so you are you with me, right? Uh, Rachel, you worry me. You look upset or something, right? Uh, you you follow everything I say, right? I rely, uh, I rely on the people that I can see. You follow what I'm describing, you understand it visually, right? It should be exciting, guys. We're talking about such interesting things. Um, yes. Let's see what is it we have there. Oh, full, uh, full, my God, full. I thought the, you will understand the question. I'm asking continuous function, does it mean differentiable? And many of you said yes. What about the rest of you? And I lost a few people, it's 32 people now, my God. Your graphic cards expired, I guess. Ah, you said no, okay. So let me so let me tell you what it is. Here is uh, here is one very obvious example. You see this triangle? Let's zoom in on the peak. When you zoom at the peak, what is it going to look like? It's going to always look like this broken line. It's going to look like this sharp edge. Yes. No matter how much you zoom at this peak, it never ever looks like a straight line. So it's not going to be differentiable at this point. You understand? Um, differentiable curves, guys, are actually called smooth because they're kind of pleasant to pet, right? You don't get cut when you pet a, when you pet a smooth curve. So uh, this is a point of non-differentiability. Yes, there are much worse types of non-differentiability. Look at look at it here. This is is a cusp. It's extremely sharp. Why is it extremely sharp? Is that look at it. Here is a triangle, you see me in, me in the camera? It's a triangle. Now a cusp is like this, you see? So the angle is actually getting to zero, you understand? So they are kind of, the, the, the left and right side of the curves are merging to zero. So that's very sharp. What does it mean in terms of the... So Pavel, if you said no, then you were absolutely right. Yes, I, I think you were kind of, uh, you almost sound like a lawyer at times, right? But uh, because you don't say a clear no or a clear yes, which definitely, keeps you afloat. So that the answer is, is the answer is definitely a definite no, because uh, if you think about it, right, zoom at this point, it never looks like a line. You understand? Differentiability is weaker than, uh, well, no, it's not weaker, it's, uh, sorry, it's differentiability is um, more specific, right? Continuity is a much uh, more general property. Differentiability implies continuity, but not the reverse. You understand? 
So what do you think, by the way, would happen if I calculated the slope from the, uh, from the left? What would be the slope as I go here? You can kind of imagine what it is. What, what, happened, what is the slope if I approach A uh, from the right? What's the slope? The slope here is, is what? Here I'm holding one point and here is another point. Can you tell me what's going to be the slope as I approach from the right? Limit as X goes to A from the positive direction. Can you imagine I'm dragging this cursor and that's my point Q and you imagine connecting it by a straight line and calculating the slope. What's the slope going to be like? What is it approaching? Q approaches a point. What does the slope approach? Here? What is the slope positive or negative when I hold my cursor here? So I'm calculating to A. So it's, this is uh, one point and this is another point. So uh, I, I, what do I do, guys? I, I have to take, uh, let's say I have to take. Um, professor, I, I, have to, I have to go. I know, I know. I, I was looking at the time. Too bad. Uh, so uh, good luck. Thank you. I hope to see you soon. All right. Okay, here is one point, guys. And uh, here is another point, yes? And uh, I can connect those points by a line, correct? Here is a line that connects them. This line, what's the slope of that line? Is it positive or negative slope? Negative, negative. Um, yes, so, so most of you said negative slope, okay? Now what, what's going to happen to the slope when I, uh, when I select the point much closer? If I select the point, I mean, it's just only a drawing, but if you understood what a cusp is, then what's going to happen to the slope if I select this point? Is it, what's happening to this line? Is it going to be the same steepness or is it going to be steeper? Exactly, right? You understand what my point is, right? So, uh, so in, the, in this picture, it's, it's going to be steeper. Here it stays the same. You see, it's just a segment of the line. It stays the same, but here, that's why it's coming. It's becoming steeper. So the slope becomes what? What do you think it becomes? Look at it. Let me give you a hint. You see, I'm sliding this pen. That's my line. I'm sliding it. What is it going to become? What is it going to become? Infinity? No. Minus infinity. Very good, but minus infinity. Do you see that, guys? That's what a cusp is. Yes. Yeah. By the way, I'm not sure I should I should brag before you, but one one student that was kind of resisting me last semester suddenly wrote me a letter. Oh, my, you, I understood now that you tried to make us feel blah blah blah. Letter is nice. I just hope, of course, uh, he means it, and it's not because he's prepping me up for some recommendation letter. Okay, but uh, definitely what I hope to hear from you. Oh yes, I read this physics book and probability, and I'm so excited by it. So it becomes minus infinity. And if I do the same thing in here, now, now the slope is, um, yes, the slope is, well, let's see, uh, it's positive infinity, yes. Because you can see the line is, uh, is, is pointing up, right? Yeah? So you, you measure slope always by, move, by, by making the run go to the right. So here, it will be the same thing, but positive infinity, yes? So it's, it's, it's a different situation there. And here I wrote it, positive infinity and, and uh, minus infinity in the other case, yes? Now let's calculate, uh, let, let's look at this function. It's, it's one minus absolute value of X. And the question is, what do you think? Where will this function fail to be differentiable? And how would you know that? Go ahead, think about it, guys. Right here is the function. It's uh, it's one minus absolute value of x. Where does it fail to be differentiable? Um, well, you can give the uh, what's the x coordinate to be precise, right? You either give me the full point or the x coordinate of that point. Yes, Pavel, very good. Uh, yes, great. 
it's at zero. Now, how do we know that? Let's work at it together, guys, right? So first of all, you can graph it, but that's a very bad habit when you graph things because you're, tra you're not training your um, inner ability to, your, your, your ability to see it without eyes, okay? Because most things you cannot graph, most things are way too complicated. So you're like in a submarine uh, in a tin can, you cannot see anything. You have to, you have to use your sonar, yes? So uh, here is my sonar. Right. I notice that uh, if that it's a piecewise function, if x is negative, it's one plus x. If x is positive, it's one minus x. Correct. Now, what is this thing? If if if, if I don't see uh, any any restrictions, this piece is a what? What is this piece? Tell me. If I, for example, let me just do it this way. If I zoom in at uh, x equal to minus five, right, and y the corresponding y. What uh, slope will I see? Uh, if I'm zooming at uh, x equal to minus five, yes. Very good, Pavel. One person sees it very, very well. What about the rest of you? When I ask what's the derivative uh, at x equal to minus five, I'm asking the same thing as a zoom in at x equal to minus five. And tell me if the curve starts looking like a line. And if it starts looking like a line, what's the slope of that line? Yes, Rachel? Yes, Christian? So if I zoom at x equal to minus five, what line am I going to see? Give me the full formula of the line in the comments. You understand what I'm asking? I am, I am an insect. I am zooming at x equal to minus five what is the equation or an equation of a line that I will see? It's a very simple question if you solve it uh, the right way. Christian, beautiful. I, uh, I am zooming in, beautiful. I am zooming in on a line because one plus X is, the equa is some equation of a line. So what line is a line going to look like? The same itself, right? It's going to look like itself. Do you follow? I don't need to do any calculation. Uh, I just right away know that the line I will see is one plus X. And what's the derivative? It's the slope of that line. It's going to be one, yes? If I zoom to the right of zero, look, that means it, that's true in general, right? The derivative to the left of zero is the same number. It's one because the derivative is asking for the slope. It's not asking me for the line. It's asking me for the slope. Uh, then if I zoom in on the right, if I zoom in on the right, what slope am I going to see? Please write me in the comments. Any, at any point, x to the right of zero. Yes, Pavel. I see a slope of minus one. So the only place where I might have a uh, failed differentiability is at zero. And here I'm testing the derivative at zero from the right and from the left. Here I'm doing it blindly. Obviously, you can just look at it and you, you, can, do, you can do it even uh, from here. It's going to be from the left, it's going to be plus one. From the right, it's going to be minus one. I can read it right off the graph. But, uh, uh, or, or I don't even need the graph. I can read it off the formulas, you understand? I mean, I would have not bothered any, I right away see it. I see that from the left, it's, min it's one. From the right, it's minus one. But here is the calculation. I approach zero from the right and I approach zero from the left here. So from the right, f of zero is one uh, and f of x is one minus x if, if, if x is bigger than zero. So when I simplify it, it's minus x over x, which is the slope minus one, which is, it's of course this slope here, right? So it's gonna be minus one. If I approach from the left, it's going to be one plus x minus one over x and the slope is one. So the function fails to be differentiable because the left and right hand limits do not uh, work. And actually, if, it's, if it's a, there is a left slope and a right slope, it means that when you zoom in, it looks like a broken line, just kind of what you see over here. Because you have a left slope and you have a right slope. Notice with the cusp, you don't see a left or a right slope. It's because the cusp is, uh, in some sense, worse type of differentiability, non-differentiability, because it's very sharp. It's really good at cutting. And uh, differentiable curves are smooth. Yes, everybody understands what I said? I think I'm so clear to myself, but what about to you? Oh yeah. My next question is, well, how many points of non-differentiability can a continuous function have?
write in your comments. It doesn't have to, is it five, seven, 10, a million? How many points do you think it can have? Of, uh, if it's a continuous function, how many non-differentiable? Many, many is no. But what's many? Many a finite number or many an infinite number? Okay, Rachel, great. So guys, do you see that it should be, it can be an infinite number? Here is a simple example, right? I can just take a function, a, a periodic function, and I can make uh, many sharp edges. I can just, uh, I can make a formula for it, by the way. The formula for this function can be the shortest distance of X to an, an integer, right? So it will, it, will cl it will have slope one and minus one, and it climbs to one half. At one half, the biggest distance is one half. One half is, is farthest away from any integer. It would generate this curve, you understand? So I gave you one curve where you have infinitely many uh, points where the function is not differentiable. My next question is this. Notice that uh, this point is somewhat isolated, right? If I zoom in around this point and if I move slightly to the right or to the left of this point, the function is smooth. In other words, over here it's differentiable, over here it's differentiable. The points of non-differentiability are isolated. Is it always the case? You understand? In other words, if I zoomed in at some point where it's where the German word for it is zackig, right? It means that there is a there is a tick tack, zackig, uh, you know, very nice word. I really like it. So if I zoomed in on a curve that's uh, sharp at a point, if I move to the left a little bit or to the right a little bit, will it have to not be sharp? You understand what I'm asking? Alex, you're alive. No. No, uh, who said that? Uh, Alex, you said it, right? No. Yeah. Okay, well, why, why yes, why no? I'm dead inside. Guys, you understand my question first of all, right? Do you? Could you repeat it again? Uh, yes, sure. Uh, I said, we are able to generate infinitely many points uh, where the function is not differentiable, but those points are isolated, you agree? In other words, uh, I, I, if I stay at this edge, at this, um, at this peak, if I move slightly to the left or slightly to the right, it will be differentiable. In other words, uh, is it true that the picture, looks, uh, the picture of continuous curves always looks like a bunch of line segments, but sometimes they are at a broken angle, you understand, kind of like this? Or yeah. is it, uh, so it's always true, right? So if, it, if it's smooth, you understand the, the thing about smooth is like everywhere you zoom in, you see a straight line, right? There is no edge. You, you think there is an edge here, but you zoom in and you see it, there is another straight line over there, right? Uh, but here you have, uh, this continu you have continuous functions where uh, when you zoom in, you don't see extra straight lines there, right? So uh, does, it, uh, does it mean that um, if, we, if we have this uh, zigzag pattern, then, um, it's isolated in a way, right? In other words, that if I move slightly, if I, if I move from the peak to the left or to the right, uh, then it's gonna be smooth there. That's my question. I hope it makes sense. So, so you are saying yes, right? In other words, move to the right, move to the left, it's going to be nice, yes? Yes, I so very nice. And, and, um, some of you, what did somebody say? Some of you might have said something funny, I don't know. You are sick, Alex. No, I'm fine. I'm just tired, like always. Yeah. So, you see, as I mentioned, I worked in the New York Aquarium, and do you know uh, uh, what I did there? That was a long, many years ago, right? So uh, I worked with sharks, and you know why I chose to work with sharks? Is because I worked with sharks and horseshoe crabs, actually, right? Because you know, people want to go and see the otter or the penguin, right? You know, the cute fuzzy animals, you know, those kids, ah, it's so cute, let me touch that, isn't that? And, and, I, and I don't like kids. So I wanted to not be bothered. I mean, here is a shark, right? Oh, you're afraid of it, didn't get away from me, right? Uh, or the horseshoe crab, right? They come, you want to pet it? No, and get away from here, right? Uh, and I don't have to deal with them. So uh, because I, I saw sharks, right? And I would scare children. I mean, it's, I would show them the megalodon uh, tooth. 
And uh, here is my, uh, where is it? Here is my rough rendering of the Megalodon tooth, you see? If you were, or just of any shark, if you zoom in on, uh, on a, a shark tooth, you see teeth, tiny teeth on top of it. It's covered in tiny teeth. That's a, that's a crappy drawing. I mean, I can show you better, right? But, uh, uh, but the, the, see, you see more teeth. And if you were to zoom in on those teeth, you will see more teeth. A shark has uh, sharp teeth. Do you, you know this uh, song uh, by, um, you know, do you know the song Mickey Messer? And the shark deer, uh, he has big, do you know the song? I know it's in German. Und der Haifisch, der hat Zähne und die trägt er im Gesicht. And the shark, he has teeth and he carries them right in his face. Do you know the song? No? Well, our lecture is over, so I guess I'll play uh, you uh, the song. Yeah, there's an English translation. I'll do it uh, in English, I guess, although I don't like it. All right, I'll stop the recording.